Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I just recently did a video about the major hack over that email provider that lost everything. All right, so today we are gonna have a look at setting up your own email provider through a hosting account. Now, we're not talking about building a server inside your house. We're not talking about anything complicated. We're going to use a cPanel in order to set up a server. So what we actually have here is we are going to walk through how to set up an email through a cPanel system. So I have the domain name here, uh, what is it, uh, tlml.link, I think, it was, which was a domain that I bought when I thought I was going to use that for doing some of my link shorteners, but I ended up going with a shorter one instead. So what I did is I add this as an add-on domain under my primary account. So the first step that you need is you need to get a hosting provider. And I actually use A2 Hosting and the, you will find an affiliate link for A2 Hosting in the uh, description down here below. So I use A2 Hosting because you can get a great server. Um, these are not connected to EIG. You get free SSLs on them so everything is going to be very well secured you don't want to do something like uh, GoDaddy or HostGator or Bluehost because those companies they're going to upsell you the SSLs they have very poor support um, and uh, they are not going to be as helpful as you need them to be and, and for those curious I'm running this uh, demonstration here on MX Linux 18 in a virtual machine. So if uh, for my case, I use a, VP, uh, a VPS hosting, I don't have the $5 monthly one, I do uh, $35 a month, uh, because it's just a, a big massive server which has the cPanel installed. If you're just needing your single server, then doing their basic shared hosting over here works great. One of my viewers, I set this up for him and it he absolutely loves it. So he hosts his own email with his own domain name. So he basically, I like his, his family name and now he can create an email address for everybody in the family. Everything is all encrypted and if A2 hosting does happen to go weird for some reason, no big deal. Um, you can make a copy of your panel and export it somewhere else. No big deal. So check out A2 hosting for sure. But we'll get back on over here. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you first how to create the email address and uh, then how to set it up inside of your server. So we're going to come down here to our email accounts. And inside of your email accounts, we want to hit our add new email account. So over here, I'm actually going to change the domain to tlml.link. And what we're going to do is give us our email address. So we're just going to do email. So my email address is going to be email at tlml.link. We have to enter a password, which I'm just going to use the generate here. And so you can all see what this is. This thing is going to be dead very soon. Um, so I'm just going to copy this guy over here as I do this. And then I want to actually save this address. So let's go into MX Linux and see what kind of uh, text plot, text messenger we have. Hey, feather pad, that'll work. All right, so we're going to use, this is our password. And of course our email is email at tlml.link. All right, so there we are. So we have our email. So I'm just going to keep that stuff over there in the passwords. Um, and that way I can use it. Now sending the welcome email is going to send you all the client instructions. I'll go ahead and send that to myself so you can get that information. All right, so there we are. Now we have the ability to see that. So now what we are going to do is if we go to our email address here, which is um, tlml.link forward slash webmail, this is gonna bring us to a login screen. Now it says it's insecured uh, just because I didn't put the HTTPS there. There's no force on the HTTPS, but since I do have free SSLs with this, it should work just fine uh, utilizing the secure one. Um, I do have to get rid of the 0295 though. Let me go back to webmail like this. Okay, there we go. So that goes to port 2096. All right, so here what we are going to do is we are going to enter our email address. So I'm going to grab that from this guy here. And we need our password. So you can actually access this as a webmail client from anywhere. You have three options inside of here, Horde's uh, RoundCube and Squirrel Mail. I think Horde gives you the best mobile experience. RoundCube, I think, is the best for your um 
your desktop version. And then down here, you can actually grab all of the different things that you need. Now, I always recommend the POP3, not the IMAP. People will laugh, oh, this is 1995. No, POP3 clears the email off your server so you don't have your, your emails hanging out on someone else's server out there. You'll have a copy of it on your local computer and then we're hoping that you have a, a good backup strategy, all right? Now, what you can do here um, is up here is you have the ability to click on the email up here and you can access all these guys. You can set up autoresponders, sync calendars and contacts, password and security, configure the webmail, uh, the mail clients, uh, contact information, filters, forwarders, tracking lists, and tracking delivery. So if you need to do something like configure a mail client, it basically gives you this information down here, but we'll go ahead and click that anyway. So here it's telling you for SSL settings, which is what you want to have, particularly if you're using A2 hosting and you always will have a free SSL installed on here. Well, as long as you say yes, please add that. Then what you're going to do is grabbing your email here. Uh, your username is always your email. The password is the password that we have in the account. And then you're going to use for IMAP 993 or for POP3 995. And then your outputting port is 465 always generally want to use these uh, these numbers over here. If you have to, you can use these guys over here. Um, so then what we're going to do is let's go ahead and set this up. I um, hope I remember how to do this. There used to be a weird step on Thunderbird. Now we're going to use Thunderbird here because it is cross-platform. Um, you can get Thunderbird on any um, on any of the uh, devices, whether you're running Mac, Linux, or Windows. Uh, the setup is going to be similar either way. So what we are going to do is we need to create a new uh, address. Get the menu bar up here so we can add a new account. All right, uh, we're going to add the mail account. So your name, uh, we're going to call this email man. Our email address is going to be our email address, which of course is going to be the same thing as our username. And of course, I copied my password up here into this list here. All right. So we are going to remember password. It's going to be looking stuff up and it's not going to be able to find it because I would really like it to not do this anyway. I can click the manual config. It's going to discount that. All right, so now just make sure that the email address is there, the password's there. Again, I'm going to use um, pop three. I'm going to type in mail here. If you don't, it's going to do like SMT dot this and this, but if you put something before it, it's actually going to work right. We're going to use this one and then make sure our username matches our email. All right. Port 995. It's going to detect that and we're going to use our normal password. Let's go ahead and retest. Okay. Let's go with done. All right. So now let's go ahead and get messages. So here is the email that we had. All right. So now this is what's in the email. It gives us all the information here. So now you are completely set up and ready to go and have a client configured on your computer. Now, of course, you can come over here and if you are using any of these other mail systems, just grab the basic information. This is the manual stuff for all of your different settings. And then you can actually send these instructions um, utilizing uh, this put button down here. So this will allow you to have all of your email on your own separate domain server. And then of course, again, if your hosting company gets crazy, go over here to your backup wizard. And then uh, with your backup wizard, then you'll just be able to get in there and uh, uh, you'll be able to get in there and uh, just um, make a whole backup of your cPanel, download a copy, go to a new server, re-upload the thing, and everything that you have is still going to be there. So that's literally how easy it is. So you need to buy a domain name, you need to buy the shared hosting. Domain name will usually cost you about $15 a year. The hosting, if you pay for the full year up front, particularly on A2 hosting, again, take a look in the description down below for the affiliate links, um, it would cost you about eight bucks a month, but you can actually get um, you can actually get that much cheaper if you pay for more in time. All right, so this is here um, 
the recurring total monthly is 100, the recurring or uh, 10, the recurring annual total is 100, the recurring uh, biannual is just under 200, triannual just under 300. So that's, uh, it's actually the same discount to go biannual and triennial. So you can use, uh, use this here to get this. And the basic shared is going to be good for most people's emails. And then you can very easily set up an email address for everybody in the family and have everything working well for you. So that is how you can get everything set up. You can check it with a webmail client. You can check it on your own device. You can set up all your, your phones, Androids, iPhones, custom phones, anything else works great. This is how I've been doing email for 15 years and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't go back and do anything else. So leave your comments in the description down below. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.